Right, we are on. So t- tonight's guest is uh, is, is Kirsty Allen. So hello. We, we, so we go way b- we go way back a, a, lot, a, a lot of years now. So um, so if you don't know Kirsty, Kirsty owns her own makeup. What would you say a makeup business? Is that the uh, right term I'm a beaut- to use? I'm actually a beautician. So beautician. I do. That sounds from... better. That sounds much better. Aye. So do everything from nails, lashes, waxing, pretty much anything to make you go from a zero to a ten real quickly. I do that. So yeah, can, uh, can I come and see you then? I. <laughs> I will book you an appointment and no need to oh, stress. <laughs> no, it's right, good. Right, how have you been anyway? I've been all right, all right. Just working away. I work six days a week these days and um, just trying to keep myself afloat and just trying to get over this COVID nonsense oh, as that was like a massive effect of me and my business. So oh, just totally. trying to bypass that. How long uh, How long did you have to shut for? So, I, um, so I've been trading since last year, but I actually opened up my own shop two and a half weeks before COVID hit. Mm-hmm. So I was closed for four, 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 almost five months. Mm-hmm. So and um, we only were allowed to open up mid July. So I've not been open right. that long, but it's right. it's picking up massively. So where uh, where can we find you if we want to get our gut sales booked in? Uh, so we're actually based in Craig and Tinney. So mm-hmm. um, it's ninety six Craig and Tinney Road, and it's the old taxi office if anybody knows it. So mm-hmm. we're there with a big pink shop. You can't miss us, and it's got my name printed above the door so. oh, yeah, I, I, drive, I drive past every day and it's safe to say I never ever miss that, that sign you like, can't but... miss it eh? gi- <laughs> but next to the shops you've got like a pharmacy a funeral directors me then a corner shop you can't miss me so totally nice. <laughs> right so go ahead, go ahead jump into this question so obviously after high school like what did you do after high school did you jump right into makeup or like um kind of and kind of not so after high school so I left in fifth year just school wasn't for me um as like a, like a lot of people um I actually went away and studied to do musical theatre for three years so um if people don't know what musical theatre is I basically trained intensively for oh there's my cat <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I trained intensively for three years singing dancing and acting um, and I was aiming to be a musical theatre performer so for people you see like on stage like in the playhouse or people you dance on cruise ships and stuff that was like my ambition and my dream before even becoming a beautician so that's what I did straight after school but um, a lot of that came in with doing makeup as well so quite mm-hmm. came in handy. So what um, because I, obviously I knew for school that you were always in your singing and, and, and drama <laughs> and stuff like that so what, 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 what made you what made you just like sack up well no sack it off but what made you just try a, a different path? Well, what actually ended up happening was when I was studying in Edinburgh, so I studied at the MG Academy of Performing Arts, um, Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember, do you know our old music teacher, Marcella MacDonald? Oh, I, 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 she was my music teacher in first, I, first and second year. I, 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 well, I. she actually worked at MG and she um, was like to me, Kirsty, why don't you come audition for the place? And I was like, right, fine. And then it turned into a college course when I was mm-hmm. in first year. So I went and got dragged into that. And basically how it ended was in my third year of training, I tore my ACL in my right knee. Um, So that was midway through my third year, which is like your most intensive year. You're doing three shows, three plays. You're um, going to do like a London showcase for agents for people to like hire you, Mm -hmm. put you on their books and stuff. And then I go and tear my right knee. So um, pretty much knackered. I danced on it for like a further six months and just made it worse. And then when I was doing auditions and stuff, it just like my knee wasn't holding out. It was constantly dislocating. And I just was like not even a year into my career, I had to give it up because Mm -hmm. at the age of like, what was I, 21, 22, they were like, you're not getting a new knee. So I had to give it up, unfortunately. Oh, it's brutal, especially at a young age, you getting told that. It's like, oh, what are they now? Well, yeah. That's my dream. Well, um, this is it. They go, they say you can pretty much be, continue dancing or you'll be in a wheelchair by the time you're 30. So I was like, aye, okay, no. I'll give it up. Aye, if you're still young, you need to, you need to crack on it. Eh? Oh, tell me about it. So, um, aye, another one. So what, um, so see the, tra- see the transition for, for that. Did you, did you then go into like beauty were you doing it in your own house or like how did you then get into that so what kind of happened was once I finished doing musical theatre I went from working from like um so when I finally gave up doing musical theatre I was working in nightclubs remember Silk oh and, but I saw you on I yeah yeah that, I, um, you used to come in and I'd used to give you triples for like one pound and hand you your full change that. back uh, I'll never forget that never forget <laughs> these so I was working in nightclubs and then for me it just wasn't working out it was like Three days a week. It's no social as well, eh? Nah. Your and that, nah. 
Exactly. Um, so I went from working in clubs to start working in offices. And for me, it just was I hate working for places like on a desk. Um, I'm oh, too I'm too mm-hmm. hyperactive. Pretty yeah. sure I got ADHD. Mm-hmm. Like I can't sit down for too long. And mm-hmm. I hate working for people who um, get paid more than me that know less than me. And yeah, telling totally me what right. I do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So basically for about two years, I would change from one job to another job to another job to another job because I just like couldn't stand it. Couldn't settle all that now. No, I just couldn't settle and I just couldn't find a job that I would like. And what ended up happening was I was doing a show and um, I decided one day, I was like, guess what? I'm going to go do a makeup course. And everyone was like, well, you already are really good at it. So you may as well go and get a degree in it. Mm-hmm. So that's what I did. Went away and did a, um, a makeup course with one of the co-founders of MAC, like MAC Cosmetics. All right, right, okay, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And did that and it was fantastic. And after that, I basically came away with the mindset of, makeup's a very seasonal job unless you're going to be in London or America or like LA and stuff like that so for me it was like I need to become a beautician Mm -hmm. and then from there I got into a mindset of that's what I'm going to do and I've Mm -hmm. never looked back. All right so I'm going to ask you as well what was the I mean obviously you said that you're obviously really confident that so what how was it how was the transition from you being an employee to the employer essentially like what how, how did you find that transition? Like how... quite strange to be honest mm-hmm. I didn't anticipate going from being an employee to being self-employed mm-hmm. that difficult because for me I was always doing like nails on the side or I was doing makeup or Halloween makeup as you mm-hmm. probably were bombarded with on social ah, media yeah, no, I've seen that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I was always sort of doing that for people around that time so I was always kind of part-time self-employed um, yeah. and then pretty much just going from being employed to self-employed it was it just kind of happened overnight um as I said I started I basically got completely qualified and I didn't want to go work in a shot like another salon because no. I, I didn't want to get back into the mindset of working for someone else who earns more than me and knows less than me and I'm doing all totally. the work so no. I was just like guess what I'm going to start my business with no money no clients very little experience and then I've done it and then in the space of a year, I got my own shop. So you just know what like, that now, then? Eh? Not this uh, is so, it. Obviously, I keep a, I keep a look on your social media, and it looks like you're you're, you're killing it. So you're, you're, oh, you're, you're going <laughs> you're, you're going all steam ahead. Eh? Right. Yeah. So we're gonna get we're gonna get away from the beautician stuff for a, for a minute. We'll come back to it. Right. I want I want to go I want to go back to like school and that. Right. So we'll start we'll start with primary school. Right. So you went to Clickington, eh? I actually didn't. So did I you know? went. I you no. Did. Well, and this is what everyone thinks. I never. But um, I went to. First of all, when I first went from nursery to primary, I was in Brunston Primary School, which is like near oh, the jewel. Oh, right, right. Were you there? Aye. Why did I think you uh, were at, I thought you were in like Sean Collin in that uh, class. No, 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 this will surprise you. So then in P4, I moved to Hermie and I was in like Redmond Barker's year, Laurie oh, Adam, right, Darren right. Miller. Lewis and that, aye. Aye, aye. Um, aye. Well, they were, he was actually in the other class. I wasn't even like Jack Hanlon and that. Oh, um, right, right, okay. So I was with all the Radges, mm-hmm. like Jimmy <laughs> Martin and all that. Um, <laughs> To be honest, like all those guys, I was like really good pals when I was younger, aye, like aye, proper tomboy. Aye, aye. Totally. So I went to Hermie and then um, stayed there till P7 and then came to Leith Academy and obviously came to Leith met. Nah, came to you saw. Met a special one, eh? How, how, did, how, did, how, did, how did you find how did you find primary school? Like obviously we're moving school now. Did you find it all right? Like as in like coursework or like how was like how was it in general? Yeah, it was actually all right. So my mum and dad unfortunately separated. So we mm-hmm. lived um down by the jewel, like Asta's way. And then my mum was like, We need to move up this way, it's closer for work for her. So um primary school for me, I slotted in straight away. I remember my very first day of primary school, I got four to six to sit next to Redmond Barker. Oh, good and luck with that. Eh? I know. And then he was like that, looking at Ben, I was like, hiya. <laughs> and the next thing you know, we're playing Run River and Bulldog in the park. And uh, it was like, I fitted in, no bother. And it was with, mostly with the boys because I'm so like into football and aye, aye, sports. Totally. Fitted mm-hmm. in, like, fitted in, no bother. And it was mm-hmm. good. But coursework and stuff, um, Ah, it was all right. Primary you can't, probably can't just... really remember because I can't really remember much of primary either. Right? Nah, I just remember like all the fun times I used to have like after school and stuff. It was class. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. So obviously, yeah, aye, so then you went on to Leith Academy. So how, how how did you find that? The transition um, from primary school to, to secondary school? Well, for me, as I was saying, like I was quite close with all like the guys and had like quite a good, mm-hmm. like, group of girl pals as well. And as soon as I went to school, do you remember when you got the talk at P7 and be like, you're going to go into 1-1, one, 1-2, one, one, so and aye, so forth. Aye. So mm-hmm. I got put into 1-7 and I was mm-hmm. the only person from Hermitage Park in 1-7. 
so I was like, yeah and they were like you're going to have nobody in your class and I was like oh great like not a single person from A or B and then went to, went to school and I can't even remember who's in my class but as soon as I went to school I met people like Lucy Hale, Lindsay mm-hmm. Mackay and then mm-hmm. um, like Lindsay was in your school ah, I good group and, mm-hmm. I, and I no, just, Lindsay, no in fact Lindsay went to Korean I was at St Indian's eh? Oh, were you at St. Ninian's? Aye, oh, Saint see, Ninian's, why am aye. I thinking you went to Craig? <laughs> I, just, I suppose I stay in Craig, yeah. So. Well, aye. in fact, I stay right beside St. Ninian's as well. So. Uh, oh, yeah, so you do. Aye. But I, um, straight to high school, I just slotted in with a different group of people. They had a like, different kettle of fish, and it was ace, like, aye, it was so good. What, sorry, I, what, um, so, so at high school, what was, like, your favourite subjects? Like, what what subjects was, like, right, that, that, that's me. Like, drama definitely was one, eh? Drama, definitely. Ah, yeah. um, music, I got into music, mm. um, but that was, like, quite later on when we started doing, like, our, like, exams and stuff. I just didn't want to do, like, CDT or that. So <laughs> when we did music, um, like, I would work in, um, I loved PE, mm-hmm. um, but never got the chance to take it. And that was it. Everything, like, anything practical, I was there. And then, no. but anything, like... English, maths, French, because I'm like severely dyslexic and I never got mm-hmm. diagnosed until fourth year. Mm-hmm. Um, I struggled a lot in school. I never paid Aye. attention. I used to skive a lot just because I never got given the support or I would get put into the class with the people who were like a very misbehaved or people who really needed the extra help, like people with, like learning difficult, like learning difficulties. And I was just like, mm-hmm. I'm not here. I'm not going to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Also, just attitude for school. You're just like, nah, can't be arsed. <laughs> uh, that's like, that's, that was basically me for the whole six years. Like, uh, just, just kind but of, did you, know. you not find it quite hard, though? Because our year was the very first year they did exams in third year. Remember that was the oh, thing? Oh, was it? Was, was that was the first, was it? Leith Academy oh, was right. the first school to ever do exams in third year. And that's why we were doing prelims in second year. So we only had one year of half mucking about. And then all of a sudden you're like, then, aye. Right, you need to take your aye. subjects. <laughs> aye. So, um, wasn't it fun? <laughs> wasn't it fun at all? Uh, that's good. I'm glad you touched on that. So, um, Right, we'll go back. We'll go back to the the, the beauty stuff. Um, right, see if see if there's somebody watching this video now, right, and they would like to. Uh, right, I want I want to like set up a business. I, they didn't have to be doing beautician or whatever. Mm-hmm. What what type of advice would you give them? Would you just say put all your eggs in one basket and just go for it? Or? So I've always say like um like know what you're wanting to do first and foremost. Right, so let's just say you're wanting to become like a PT, right? So that obviously mm-hmm. you can relate to that. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you want to become a PT, go and get qualified first and mm-hmm. foremost. Yeah. Um, you need to you need to learn everything like yeah. you want to make sure if you're going into a business you know your you know your shit before you, need you to come know in the books and stuff like that you, you need to know everything mm-hmm. because if you're going in and not knowing things one day you're going to get caught out or you're going to be like oh my god I really wish I knew that or vice versa but um, if you're wanting to start a business go in know exactly what you're wanting to do mm-hmm. Um be open to like taking advice from people as well yeah. as like learning your own advice like basically what how I always say it is like someone gives you advice process it in your head and then what information you don't want put it out yeah. so you just like only intake what you want and just go in with it and um, people do say like oh you need a lot of money to start a business I had mm-hmm. not an ounce of savings and I mm-hmm. started a business I see that, 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 that that's good obviously for people to know as well like People, uh, as you say, people think, oh, you need all this money. But you, you just say you, you really don't have a don't. lot and you just, you smash the age. Just motivation, exactly. just smash right through it. Good stuff. Yeah. And um, so what, what is, uh, what's your future plans then? Are you, is your future to be, obviously, obviously you run a shop now. Are you, yeah. Is that, is that where you see your future? So my plan is, so at the minute, obviously I've run my own shop and it's only been open for less than five months. So ah, it's, been, ah, it's, it's still, mm-hmm. it's still like early on. But what my goals is, I'm sort of wanting to start like a, sort of franchise but like within right, Edinburgh okay. so I, I don't totally want to become like a chain like Charlie Miller or anything like that yeah yeah but my goal is within the next five years is that I'm wanting to open another beauty shop that actually has like a daycare center in it oh right right nice and nice, um, nice. so my sister is I am she runs her own business too she's a right. childminder so me and her are wanting to like sort of tag team and like opening up another shop that has like for like things like single mum, single dads who want to come and get treatments done, but they can't because they've got commitments like children. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. what they can do is come in, drop their kids off, go upstairs or downstairs, get what they need done, and without the stress of their kid being tagging on their leg or pulling on mm-hmm. them, and yep. and they can just relax for an hour or two, and then no. they can get to go. So that's the plan. And then well, after that, that's it. That's some say goals like that's that's yeah. brilliant. Like, I didn't didn't expect that. Like I, I thought maybe be I just kick, kick on with the shop, but that, that's that, that's uh, awesome. Like I want another. I want to start with like a shop, and then hopefully like down the line, basically not have to work anymore, have it run for me so I can go travelling, do what I want to do. Oh, the life. Eh? See, I wake, oh. up, I wake I wake up every morning, that alarm goes off, and I was like that. Ah. 
nah, I can't do this. I can't. I can't work. I can't work every day. I, I, need I know. To be, I need to be away. But, I do contemplate yeah. every morning, being like, do I need a job? Do I need a job today? <laughs> <laughs> totally. Uh, I what else I got to ask you on that? It was a uh, right. So obviously your future plans is that. So in te- in terms of now, like how, how many folk have you got working for you? You got a so, couple of people. Um, well, I did initially have a few people working for me mm-hmm. in the shop, but COVID, as you know, it's a massive dampener on people's businesses. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. And what ended up happening was I had a few girls who, um, without being disrespectful, just weren't in the mindset or wanting to really work. They mm-hmm. didn't want yeah. to promote their business and stuff like that. And to be honest, it's a really hard time. So mm-hmm. basically business didn't work out for them. So at the moment, it's just myself in the shop. So we're still right. looking for people to come work. But I'm wanting people who are like driven, who no, are totally. really wanting to like be like on board. But at the minute, I'm enjoying my own company. It means but I don't really talk to anybody Good. else. <laughs> but but uh, that, uh, that's another thing as well. It's like some, somebody's watching this video as well and they want to maybe get into makeup. Yeah. Or like, even to just drop you a message, you can give them advice, tell them like 100%. what courses to go on and that as well. Or even if somebody's already qualified and they've just, but well, you basically just say there's a there's an advert going, eh? So yeah. you never know, hey, that's what this video is all about. <laughs> exactly. Well, we're basically looking for um like a full-time nail technician somebody who's going to just do all the nooks and crannies all the nails, yeah. mm-hmm. all the nail stuff um and we're looking for a makeup artist even though i do nails and makeup myself i like that's my side like i've got other yeah. things i focus on and then we're looking for someone else just to fill a space so somebody who does like either hair extensions or hair mm-hmm. braiding or mm-hmm. something there's something yeah. there that's good. Listen, yes. a, a, a wide range, then. Eh? That's good. Aye, but you should get you training to do hair. That's what. Aye, I, I can. I'd love to get my style in. Eh? I need my hair cut already. But aye. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway. you can have a bit of mine if you want. Look, it's tiny. <laughs> aye, what, I, what, I, what, 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 ha- what happened with the with, with the hair? What, so basically, what ended up happening? In fact, what, sorry, I'll interrupt you. I seen a, I don't know if it was an Instagram story you done or it was like a Facebook video, and you're like, right, I'm, I'm got to get the clippers. I'm got to clip my hair. And I was like, yeah, what? Yeah. I was like, what? And then you done it, and I was like. She's went ahead with it. Aye. <laughs> aye. I was like, I'm mad. Aye, so yeah, what happened? So, so what ended up happening was um, at the beginning of COVID, um, I was um, staying with Luke at the time, mm-hmm. and we were um, obviously I had no idea what was happening with my business. Every day I'd wake up and I was so stressed. Um, unfortunately, during COVID, I got no financial help from the government whatsoever, mm-hmm. not a penny. So I was basically relying on um, Luke at the time. And what ended up happening was my hair started falling out just with stress. Just with stress, aye. Yeah. So wow. basically, like if I'd run my hands through my hair, there be like clumps of hair and stuff coming out and it got to the stage where like my eyelashes and my eyebrows were falling out too and I was mm-hmm. like oh my god this is so crazy and then one day and well to be honest I never mentioned it to anybody and um, so my hair was constantly up in a bun didn't mention mm-hmm. it and one day I was like I can't do this anymore so I just went to ask those got clippers and I just went for it and I just <laughs> did it and then everyone from there was like have you had a Britney Spears 2007 minute and I was like yeah I think I did <laughs> <laughs> Britney Spears moment. So, I, so obviously, like lo- lo- lockdown was just a total shit time for you. Then, obviously, oh, hundred like. percent. But at the end of the day, twenty twenty is a year like the amount of stuff. A forgotten year. Seen. It's a forgotten year. It's nearly Christmas already. I was, I I was thinking that the other day. I was like, ah, it's nearly November. It's like it's, it's Christmas time, and I was like, fucking hell, it's crazy. Like Where's my birthday went? was last week, and I was like, oh my god, like my birthday's passed. It was already it's Christmas around the corner. So, oh, fucking mad. but I'm sick of twenty twenty. I'm over with right. it. It's done. But it's done. coming back, Luke. Aye, I thought it's, this it's, is my natural colour. Aye, it's came around, but if, if, if nobody knows Kirsty as well, it was like proper to the wood, like there was there was nothing, eh? it was a 0.5. Yeah. You should like that. insert a picture of like how aye, bald I'm, it was. <laughs> I will do. I'm not, I'm not very good with the technical stuff, so I'm, I'm probably hopeless at that. But, oh God, well we'll but, put it in the comments. I'll we'll put it in the comments. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Another, another bit I'll touch on, so we'll go away for the, the, the beauty stuff and stuff in the lockdown and that. Um, Jim, I know obviously you're very, very dedicated to the gym and stuff, and I noticed have you still got a personal trainer? I do. So at the moment, I am. I've got a, a woman called Fiona. Um, mm-hmm. She is that pure? Um, is it pure? Is it pure gym motion terminal? You're yeah, yeah, pure gym motion terminal. Aye. Um, Fiona, she's an absolute beast. Mm-hmm. Um, she, we're training four days a week, doing like four PT right. sessions a week. Um, basically, I've just decided that for years and years, I've had other PTs. And people that we know and stuff that I was mm-hmm. always focused on on getting small, getting tiny. Yeah. And for me as a curvy person, I was, and I was a dancer, I'm an athlete. Um, it's a genetic thing, Ken. It's just yeah. the way it is, Ken. 
like for me like uh, you've seen my legs like they're absolute like muscle they're steel oh, like yeah, my yeah. calves are bigger than people's biceps half the time <laughs> and um and literally I was so used to trying to get small and I was just like guess what no so now we're doing like powerlifting so oh very good um, very good so, so you'll be getting strong you'll be getting strong pretty quick then eh? pretty aye, quick aye, yeah yeah aye. I was looking at the scales the other day how much weight I put on I was like shit that's a lot of muscle <laughs> yeah 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 people uh, I, I say I say that to all my clients as well like they're they're always like worried about a number it's like muscle weighs weighs more than, than, oh, yeah. than fat so it's like then you just just look at the mirror I always say look at the mirror that the, the mirror yeah. never lies you know what I mean so one thing I always say as well um from going from being a, like a professional dancer who who is basically getting told every day you look fat you need to be small you need to ah, do this you need crazy. to be you need to be in a certain box and to where I am now I'm 25 and I'm like guess what I'm so happy with the way I look and how I feel and like mm -hmm. Even when I go to the gym and train, there's like I see so many girls who are so focused on just getting no. like supermodels, and I'm like, that's not you're never going to get to that stage. So just like yeah. be realistic and do what you're going to look amazing at, and yeah. most of the time it's lifting weights. Ah, yeah, like people just sitting in front of the mirror doing the glute kickbacks and that we abandoned their legs. And it's like, come on, right? Anyway, I'm I'm, I'm just getting negative now. I could <laughs> I could rant all day about that. Bye, so how are you, how are you how are you finding the PT then? Has it got everything going well? Is it good? Everything's going well. Obviously, um, as we were just discussing before the, the chat, um, I've actually fractured my foot. So mm -hmm. um, right. I'm, a, I'm in a bit of a setback at the minute where mm -hmm. um, before we were training um, le lower legs three days a week and then mm. a core and then two upper body times a week. So for me, it's that's a pretty, setback. Uh, that's pretty, that's pretty, pretty intense as well. Just, just jump right back into the gym and do, and do that. But I feel uh, pretty... But yeah. you'll, you'll, you'll bounce back for that anyway because you obviously you're, you're really dedicated to what you're doing. That's yeah. you'll, you'll smash back for that. So <laughs> I, you, you were, are you still are you still playing football? You're playing football for a bit. Eh? Or are you just playing uh, with your mates? Well, basically in school and stuff, I used to play football like for like school and all that stuff, just like crap, crapness. Uh, but kicking the ball a bit. Aye. Kicking the ball. Aye, exactly. And then well, I obviously went away to dance. Still used to play like fives and stuff, but only mm -hmm. recently. Um, all of my mates are like, let's go back and play fives, and I'm like, oh my god, I miss football mm -hmm. so much. It's just it's um, a social thing as well with your mates. Oh Kick yeah, ball, it's brilliant. Eh? And it's Good. an extra bit of fitness as well. It's not totally. just like lifting mm -hmm. weights. It's like running mm -hmm. about outside and forgetting how unfit you actually are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but honestly, fives has recently just changed my life. I, I love it, and football right. is life, as you know. <laughs> get, get out, kick a ball, bit fresh air. Yeah, that's, that's that's all you need sometimes. Aye. Yeah. And it's totally. even good to have a bit a bit friendly competition with it. You even know, like you knowing that you need that in your day to day uh, life totally, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you play five for that, or do you? What do and you nah, play? well, I, I gave up football a couple of years ago, eh? But um, I play I play sevens on a Monday night. Well, it's obviously with COVID and stuff. There's no there's no uh, being anything, eh? But I, but I, I'd, I've not played I've not played in probably about six months now, eh? So. Oh, uh, I need to get you back in and play fives with us. I, I'll need to come along for a game with you, eh? <laughs> Show you up. I'll, Oh, Denny, just Denny, take my other ankle out just in case. <laughs> <laughs> How we? I, we'll touch on uh, we'll touch on Hibs. You still obviously you're still following Hibs. Is, is I am. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, Hibs, born and bred, raised. Literally, they're my life. Pretty yeah, much. Um, yeah, I was a season ticket holder for a few years, but this year just not just All giving right. it up. Um, it's mm -hmm. obviously no worth it. Obviously, still supporting the team and stuff, but at the minute yep. with money and stuff. Like you can't uh, afford everybody to is different eh? financially uh, kind of, as you said you when, when it was locked down you you weren't getting any help for the governments how can you afford to pay 30 pound a month or whatever it is eh? uh, or like three or four hundred pound for a season ticket that you uh, can't even go to games and uh, it's, things it's a nightmare like I, I'm, I'm i'm still uh, i'm still seeing the gold and it's like every every month 38 pound comes out like that for what <laughs> like, i'm not even being in it <laughs> exactly but. Well, I'm saying that Halloween though, semi-final, Hibs Hearts. Oh, it's oh, gonna be a, be, it's gonna be uh, a belter. <laughs> but you see, that's uh, the, the pubs and that are shut for another week, so obviously there'll not be any pubs or that. But ah, uh, you just just sit in the house and have a have a drink or whatever. I anyway, get yeah. Hibs TV on and you'll be fine. Aye, uh, aye. Uh, what? Um, right. So I'll ask you this question: Where were you on that famous day? You were at the game, eh? I was. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I was with. Um, so me, my. There's four of them. Yeah, there's four. There was like me and my four best pals. Mm -hmm. So it was like Lucy, Lindsay, Dana, and Ellis. And we got the bub um the bus from the Alhambra bar. No, right, aye, aye. Six AM. We were drinking from six. And I mean, by the time we got to the pub, we were pished. And then <laughs> um <laughs> by the time we actually got to the match, oh, you should see the videos. I need to show you them one day. Like aye, us walking aye. doing like steaming, the streets, aye. steaming with flags. Uh, I like spilt something doing my scarf already which has not been washed since by the way <laughs> um and then we were there and 
basically do you not remember that day they were like oh it's going to snow the whole day they were like uh, it's going I, I to snow i remember that it's snowing i i it was the I, best day ever like, oh denny so the whole day we basically kept going it's going to snow today it's going to mm-hmm. snow and they were like not snow and then basically obviously as you know like just the outcome of it i ended up as soon as the final whistle went i jumped over the fence so i was at like the corner flag between the goals and the corner flag Aye. jumped over the fence bypassed the freaking guy in one of the high vest jackets Aye, supervisor boy i lost my phone my keys and my purse did not give a flying fuck no and I was, I got a bit of the grass and I keyed a bit of the net before I lost my keys. And brilliant. I still got them to this day. <laughs> brilliant. I, I can remember, obviously, the brilliant day. Probably, well, it is probably the best day of my life. But oh, I, remember, yeah. I, I remember coming back to Leith and honestly, I have never seen anything like that. How busy Leith Easter Road was. Mm-hmm. Genuinely, like millions of people, like people on the roads. And it was just crazy. It was, you'll yeah. never ever see a day like that again. No. Really. If you, you think I mean? the day coming back was busy, it was the parade day the next oh, day aye, for me. Aye. That was like green's my favorite color and i've never in my life seen so much green like not even just uh, up like leith walk but every side street was green uh, and it was just oh god that was like i was on a two-week bender for that like i was <laughs> this is when i was working in offices i would go to work pished come home pished and i was just constantly in and out it was, it was so good but where were you on the day what i've never heard your story like what happened did, did you be- get on the pitch uh, no, well, basically, so obviously the, the full time whistle went right, and everybody's screaming. So I'm like, I'm running to the side, eh, so trying to get down. So I've got to the <laughs> step, and I've just got that folded like that, cause, and everybody was on top of me. And I, honestly, I thought I'd like broke my leg or something, and I was like hobbling. I was like, I can't even get on the pitch. So I hobbled back to my seat. So I, I was, I just basically went back to my seat, eh, but oh, nah. it was unreal. Like honestly, like the, oh, the best day of my life. Eh. And there was so like I just remember Snapchat, like oh, everyone from school had just seen like. Everyone was there, and I'm like, where is everybody? Like, oh, yeah, we're all here, but we can't see each other. It's so good, <laughs> Literally, best day of my life. Right, so how do, how do you think we'll, uh, we'll get on this season? Do you think we'll be top three? or? Mm, I think top three, mm. yeah. I you definitely think so. Think so. Well, Between us and Aberdeen, you would think, eh? But... Aye, well, aye, you'd think so. But like, let's just see, I always with Hibs we always end up Hibs in it so let's just had your aye, breath well. and Denny I always say just Denny comment on it and then we'll just see what happens aye totally we'll see what happens right <laughs> um aye so honestly I th- thanks very much for coming on the night first no nice, it's story. totally fine thank it's you being brilliant so I'm, I'm just like a wide, wide range of people to come on and just have a chat because I, I, I like hearing other people's stories eh like I, yeah. I, I don't know what it is like it's something it's something to do it's quite fun as well eh? yeah obviously everybody's got a different story and stuff because obviously if you watch, watch back, uh, podcasts on the net and stuff it's always like famous people and that it's had probably like a normal Joe Vlogs it's fairly like a normal background and yeah. so it's, ni- it's nice to hear your story eh? oh thank you well <laughs> one of the best things I've ever watched for pod it's not a podcast but have you ever watched Hot ones where people no. eat like the, right get no. on it it's called hot ones and it's celebrities and they, all they do is go through like eating chicken wings and they just talk about their life and their career and it's so amazing yeah, but I, I. you've got people like Shia LaBeouf, Zac Efron, um, right, right. Ziggy Azalea and all that stuff on it and it's just right. amazing but no <laughs> literally like get a few people made for Leith Academy you get you've got some crackers uh, like well people... I've got uh, I've, I've, I've got a few people in the pipeline eh? but I, I, like some, some of the people I know that they compose myself because eh? I'll, um... I'll just laugh the whole time <laughs> But I find you got you got anything else, any like last things to touch touch on or that that you've not. Eh, nah, over? just always like just stay like stay healthy, stay mindset mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and aye, all good. I and totally I hope you're, and I'll, same as well. Like honestly, for you, like well done with your business and stuff as well. Like just aye, keep just keep going with it and you'll do it absolutely fantastic. Aye, you too. You keep smashing it as well. As long ah, as thanks, man. I'll hopefully yeah. I catch up with you soon when all this COVID stuff and we'll go for a we'll go for a couple of drinks or something. All right. Oh, of course. With everybody, no. Lucy and Max. I, I I seen Lucy a couple of months ago at Sean's, but I, I was I was asking I was asking for Lucy. Who was I speaking to the other day? I can't even remember, but I said I'll tell Lucy I'm asking for her. But aye, that's probably, probably like Amy or something. I <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe was. I can't even really remember it. But I thanks very, thanks very much, Kirsty. No worries, for that, my right? pleasure. Right, brilliant. I'll speak to you soon. Take care. Eh? See you later. Bye. See you later. Cheers. Thank you.